Hi, everybody. It is still March 2nd, 2021. What prompted this video was a comment below the video that I posted earlier on the flooding in Kentucky. A subscriber took a video of what the sky looked like just a couple of days ago. So for those of you who don't know about the massive flooding in Kentucky and what people are dealing with, let me just do a very brief, brief intro. And this is not just limited to Kentucky because flooding is happening all over the world. We uh, had the heavy rain, and Sunday, it rained all day, and we did not realize it was going to be this bad. Uh, we had very little time to get our cars moved, our business shut down, uh, get people out of town, call people to come in to move their stuff. Uh, I called two or three people to come in and evacuate their buildings and stuff like that. This is the biggest flood we've had since 1957. The last and I have to wonder about the floods. In 1957, the flood, 1984-88, were these also weather modification experiments that they were doing? They may very well have been because we just don't know what natural, what, think about it. Even the baby boomers who are really, I guess, we're the oldest generation now. The weather that we had growing up, <laughs> I, I wonder now, was it natural? I don't know. This man lost 100 cars, 100 cars in this rain event. And he's not the only one. This, look at the, this is a street sign, Bob's Drive. This is the flooding in Kentucky right now. So, it's pretty bad. And this is only one area. Many counties have their towns underwater. So, anybody who could think that this is, well, what do they think, climate change? You know, people cannot get out of the lie and the lie is easier. The truth is extremely demanding. It requires time and energy and going through that cognitive dissonance and Argentina. Okay. So, um, it does require a lot. The truth is not easy. And lying, just accepting all of the lies that they hear, not you know, changing anything in life, changing yourself. It's We've got a lot of lazy people. But I want to show you this video taken by a subscriber, The Sky Over Kentucky, on the 24th.
So what are we seeing here? We're seeing black carbon dust, and we are seeing an awful lot of microwaves, the ripples. Now, when you see this in your sky, does it mean that you will have massive flooding in the next couple of days? It doesn't mean that, but it could mean that. I mean, I've seen these guys now since really 2010, 2009, 2010, and nothing will happen or something will happen. But the black carbon dust is a very cheap, inexpensive ingredient that they use to modify the weather. So I want to thank the subscriber. Everybody should be filming. Everybody should be filming, even if it's just for, you know, uh, the purpose of documenting what is taking place. So thank you for doing that, Tricia. And I hope that you are okay. I hope that your home is okay. I've posted quite a lot over the years on black carbon dust, video and pictures of black carbon dust dumped in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. The winter of 2011 and 12 was very warm, and that winter people were walking around in shorts and t-shirts in Massachusetts. Anybody remember? January, February. So hot. So what was going on? Well, we had an awful lot of black carbon dust dumped. This black that you see is black carbon dust. And it's, uh, you know, in this video, I'm talking about how I just felt like I was crazy and why I named my two first channels Kafka Winston World because... My educated friends were making me feel like Winston Smith in 1984. I literally thought that I was, <laughs> okay, something's very wrong here in our sky, but something's very wrong with what people are perceiving you know, some people perceived that it was just a beautiful sunset, and then others were claiming, well, it was, it was pollution from factories, but there were no factories around. But the black carbon dusts, dust that was dumped, this was a regular happening. And then when I started driving around the country, it was a regular happening everywhere black carbon dust. They load the atmosphere up with black carbon dust, and when they want to modify the weather, that ingredient is in the atmosphere. But, but this stuff falls down, and we breathe it in. Is it really surprising that we've got an awful lot of very sick Americans? Okay, so... What is this? This is the, uh, the seminal black carbon dust paper back in the 70s. I'll show you the title of it, but what can black carbon dust do? Well, it was known to heat up the atmosphere. Oh, those heat waves? Manufactured. And it can also enhance rainfall. It can enhance the size of the clouds, you know, over selective land regions in need of precipitation. It can alter uh, tropical cyclones, fog dissipation, accelerating the snow melt, carbon dust. And here is the Uh, title, Weather Modification by Carbon Dust Absorption of Solar Energy, William Gray, and I, this was a series of papers. There were, 
I believe, three other papers, including this one. And black carbon dust, it is a great, inexpensive source for atmospheric heat. So when you see all of that black, I bet your temperature will rise. That will increase. But all of the microwaves, all of these ripples that you see, it's, look, this is not natural. This is not the sky that we used to have. And how it is that people are not questioning any of this is really remarkable. So, and there's so much, you know, U.S. Navy creates and destroys clouds using carbon black. You can create clouds, you can destroy clouds, you can heat up the atmosphere, you can bring about more rain. And this is just one method of black carbon dust, steering hurricanes with carbon black dust. All right, so here is the weather modification playlist that I have. And we've got lithium they spray, we've got barium, we've got strontium, we've got aluminum, of course, and we've got black carbon dust, and we've got an awful lot that's going on, and people are just not paying attention at all. Nor do they want to know. Nor do they want to know. Gray, black, lithium clouds. All right. Well, carbon black controls clouds. And this is another video that I posted. Heat waves already. And all you need to know, that it's temperature modification induced by man. And this is a video where I went into that William Gray article quite a bit. Variations. Because of its... Uh, you, if you want to watch the video, the link will be below. Um, this is Brazil. Já afundou aqui ó, na rodoviária de uma pessoa. Abriu uma, catre... uma cratera. There's nothing funny about this. This is ruining people's lives. But I got a comment from a subscriber, Joanne Steen, who is in Australia. Sure enough, Australia has been hit with more flooding. You know, well, I have to say probably two years ago and before. I would go through all of my bookmarked, you know, sites that I would plow through on a daily basis, and sure enough, I would see, you know, something about the weather, something about flooding, something about fires. I don't see that anymore. We have so much going on that 
I think a whole lot of people are just not posting on what is taking place with our weather. And it's very, very hard because you can't, you couldn't, that, that, I mean, what's taking place right now, and then even just to cover all of the massive flooding that's taking place on a daily basis all over the world, you can't do it alone. You cannot do it alone. So, I do need subscribers to let me know what's taking place. So thank you, Joanne, Australia. Good evening. A massive downpour north of Coffs Harbour has left residents facing a heartbreaking clean-up after dozens of homes were swamped by flash flooding. Rivers broke their banks overnight around Corindi, a goods train derailed and heavy trucks were swept off roads. 300 millimetres of rain in 24 hours caused this major flooding of the coastal plain north of Coffs Harbour. Roads were cut. The SES called out for rescues, including of this truck driver near Corindi Beach. His double trailer flung aside by the force of the water over Solitary Island's way. He'd been stuck for hours, terrified but uninjured. One of 15 rescues overnight. Some incredibly life-threatening situations that are unfolding uh, and we're attempting to get to as many people as possible as quick as we can. This truck, he barely escaped water up to his windows. Got out the other side and uh, I, thought we're, I thought we were dead. I honestly thought we were dead. The flood surrounding, then rushing through nearby homes. Sharon Fletcher taking these pictures from the roof where she and her partner sheltered for hours in the early morning darkness as the water simply took over. I wasn't scared at all, more just, oh my God, I'm feeling sorry for like the cows. I asked him, what about the cows and horses around here? Where do they go? Logs punched through walls. The flood rushed in, leaving behind a massive cleanup. Down the road, Ian shows us the devastating impact on his place. Every room was awash. You couldn't leave. No, no, because it was higher outside. It was up to there outside. His daughter's bed was floating as she slept. Full freezers lifted up and tossed around. Out of the soaking ruins, they've tried to salvage what they can. You can see how high the flood has reached, but even as the waters were rising, Ian and his family had to stay inside here because outside conditions were just too dangerous. They had to wait for several hours before the waters started to recede. Inland at Nana Glen, a goods train derailed. A locomotive and 14 carriages knocked off the tracks. The drivers escaped serious injury, but 8,000 litres of diesel was spilled. Fortunately, its cargo of dangerous chemicals remained upright and intact. The crash happened around 2.25 a.m. as the train, a whopping 1.5 kilometres long, hit a flood-damaged section of track. Carriages ended up in a farm paddock. The owners posted, not every day we get a train in our backyard, but all horses and train driver are OK. And Paul Caddick joins me now from Corindy Beach. Paul, that train wreck is massive. How long will the clean-up take? It'll take a while. This is what happened to a banana farm. From above, the scale of damage is hard to comprehend. Across the far north, banana crops are completely flattened by yesterday's wild winds. Oh, most of the farms by beside us, they're looking at 90 to 100%. Uh, we're probably 80 to 90. The sharkers are just beginning to trawl through what's left of their crop at South Johnston near Innisfail. We probably won't have an income after we've cleaned up now um, until maybe September, October this year. Further north, this 30-year-old Gordon Vale shed that survived five cyclones couldn't stand up to yesterday's battering. This just oh, yeah, came so out of the blue. Yeah, this it was... was there was nothing, nothing to warn us. The tropical storm brought down giant trees and left tens of thousands without power. And then I heard an almighty crack and bang come out the back and the tree was on the house. For a system that wasn't a cyclone, it certainly created a lot of interest for us. Uh, we had a lot of wind and a lot of rain and a lot of jobs for something that wasn't crossing our coast or wasn't classified as a cyclone. No warning. No warning. So you have 
what was essentially a cyclone, but not a cyclone, and no warning. Okay, this is what man can do. So for all of you who leave the comments claiming that people are stupid, why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they getting the sandbags? Why aren't they, you know, preparing for... You have no clue how man can bring about weather events that literally destroy your home in... You have no warning for it. And they can bring it about anywhere in the world. You know, I'll show you Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia now has rivers. Uh, come on. All right. You, you, all right. See, this is the problem because so many people are on different pages. They have different levels of knowledge. And with their level of knowledge, they end up judging people for, you know, Uh, on knowledge that is not quite enough to really fully understand what is taking place. You know, Texas, sub-zero weather, really? A whole lot of Texans have never experienced anything like that. And while they had warning of this Arctic blast, did they really know what that Arctic blast was going to really be? I mean, an Arctic blast for Texas might be you know, temperatures in the 20s or 30s, you know, for a day. We're talking sub-zero temperatures for days. It's upsetting. The southeast is being smashed by wild storms tonight, causing flash flooding and widespread power outages. Georgie Chumley, thousands of homes are blacked out. That's right, 15,000 at the latest count, thanks to 75,000 lightning strikes from this band of severe storms that's quickly moved across the southeast. Particularly affected has been the suburb of Springfield Lakes, which of course was smashed by that hailstorm back in October. Many homes and many uh, residents haven't had the chance to get their roofs repaired or even claim that on insurance, sending tarpaulins flying. Uh, all this water and all this rain has put water over the top of major arterials, including the Pacific Motorway. There's been 73 millimetres in 30 minutes at Greenbank and 55 millimetres in Brisbane in just the space of half an hour. Now, it's dropped the temperature incredibly after massive humidity this afternoon by almost 10 degrees. The rain has eased here in Milton, but it is now impacting and moving further north to suburbs like Strathpine and Debra. It was intense. Thanks for that, Georgie. Now to Tony Auden. Uh, Tony, there were... You see those winds? They had no clue. It's really... Rescues, you know, trucks being carried off the road because of the water train derailments, homes destroyed, and this is weather used as a weapon. You can go to the site. I will link below to it. It's Zoom Earth, and what you can do is uh, go through... Oh, I have to... Make it a little smaller. No. Nope. I can't get it up. Um, they have the dates right under where you're looking. And this is February 28 at 8 p.m. 7 p.m. 6 p.m. 5 p.m. So you can... Click it. You can also do the live satellite and hit play. And no, this is not a natural storm that you had here in Australia. And look, what do you have here? I mean, what? What? I, it's really hard to figure out. All right. 
So you have this massive storm, I guess, that's going to be, I don't know, what is it going to be doing? It's a uh, cyclone, Niren. Is this coming for you? But it decided, oh, I don't want to wear a mask, so I am definitely going to be turning around here. I ain't going inland. What? Ha really? Okay, this is the trajectory. Can you see that something is wrong here? Can you, please? It takes a sharp left, and then, oh, I I'm not going inland. Are you kidding? They'll quarantine me. I'll have to be quarantined for two weeks. But, you know, the clouds, Brisbane got hit. They're not natural, you know. And, all right, the 28th, let's just take a look at this. I'm going up 7 p.m., 8 p.m. I think it was around there. Maybe not. Well, you can play around with this, but you begin to see the most god-awful colors in our atmosphere. See, look, you've got a perfect... I wish... How do I get rid of this? Um, might just be from the live satellite, but I need that to click away. Um, look at this. It's... Come on. You have them beefing up the clouds. But this is the clouds that have moved off now. Okay, so now we're at March 1. And I've done this before with the flooding and the fires and that you had in Australia. But you begin to see, really? Look at how nicely formed is that just blob of manufactured cloud. And here you have more and more clouds being manufactured. My God. So, ah. Uh, I'm up to March 2nd, 1 a.m., 12 a.m. I'm going back, 11 p.m. So I guess, did this, okay, is this, I guess it's heading back out. It started here. I, all right. Um, microwaves. But... Let me see. Look at all of these. This is not Mother Nature making these little blips of cloud that blow up. All right. I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to pause it. Wait. All right. I can't find it, and I can't spend time looking for it. But I'll link below to this site. Look Look at this. It's wild, okay? This is not... You've got, like, <sighs> cyclones or hurricanes developing. Um, this is such... Here it, it, this is not natural. It's, I'm sorry. This whole cloud crap is not natural. And where is this baby going? Who knows? All right. I'm sorry for all of those who have had 
their homes destroyed. Look at how nicely defined is this block of, yes, nanobots. Tell me what else could be these little beady, you know, clouds in our atmosphere. What else could it be? Because it's not Mother Nature creating this. And when you see how nicely defined they are, and you see the, you know, uh, defined um, look at this. Coordinates have been given to the nanobots. Nanobots, literally, they have GPSs. They have their own electromagnetic frequencies. They can receive or send data. They can create stratus clouds. And they can line up perfectly. And here it is. It's a signature that this is not Mother Nature. It is man. Oh, man. All right, so I got this. This was uh, on the 28th of February, 2021. NASA deliberately created artificial glowing clouds in unusual weather control experiment. Okay, NASA has been producing glowing clouds for an awful long time. Militaries. Uh, and I also have a video on artificial clouds. The, um, this was back in 2015. NASA experiment is going to light up the sky with beautifully colored clouds tonight. A rocket. Well, a rocket. It's a rocket unveiled. A rather mesmerizing experiment. The Super Soaker, Super Soaker mission, in which they fired a small rocket into the upper atmosphere, which the agency then detonated to create artificial glowing clouds for, for science. It's for science. <laughs> yeah, for science. Don't worry. There goes the rocket. All right. Um, but it, what is interesting, it cools the atmosphere. As it turns out, water vapor that high in the upper atmosphere can significantly lower the surrounding temperature, generating these haunting, icy-hued clouds in the process. Huh. Well, one has to wonder about Texas. Water vapor is a common byproduct of satellites and rocket launchers, meaning that as the space race heats up, the atmosphere may cool down, and these glowing clouds may become a much more common sight in the night skies over certain parts of the globe. Now, Montana. Oh, well, great. Don't know what happened there, but let me... Um, Black carbon dust, nicely defined lines of black carbon dust in the sky. Montana has had a very warm winter and hardly any snow. Well, where I am, which is only one mile away from Canada. And I am up in the mountains. There should be quite a bit of snow. Well, everything. I'd say the most snow that I shoveled here in Montana was probably two inches. No joke. Two inches. Um, but the, the amount of black carbon dust that I've seen in the three months that I've lived here, it has been enormous. But what I really wanted to show you was one of those ionized glowing clouds. But I also want you to 
um, see is that that was no experiment. That was no experiment at all. This is Montana. Look at this. Is it barium? Is it lithium? Both can produce reddish or black. And you see the, the frequencies, the pulsating frequencies. I mean, this is pretty much what I see a whole lot here. Oh, that's Bandit. Bandit sees it too. I mean, that ain't normal. That is not a beautiful sunset. That is a sky filled with heavy metals, a whole lot of chemicals that they do use to modify the weather, geoengineer the sky, and modify us because they are spraying lithium because lithium is one of the ingredients that they use to make artificial clouds. I have all of this documented on my playlist weather modification. So, really? You're going to tell me that that is a beautiful sunset? It is horrifying. But all of the black, the black carbon dust. I mean, it's March 2nd. And people are, well... I walk out with just a, you know, thin jacket and the snow is melting, the ground is muddy. All of this black carbon dust can heat up the atmosphere. Oh man, oh man, don't you just want to scream? I do. Well, here is one of those glowing clouds. You think that is a natural cloud? Well, it ain't. And if you see this, keep your eye on it because you will see the ionization just move through it. It's getting longer. I mean, it's, it's literally moving through this cloud. pulsating frequencies. That's when you see the camera going in and out of focus. See, it's grown down here. In the very beginning, you didn't see the colors down here, the ionization. I'll show it to you again. Very little. Boom, that was a big pulse. All right. Um, so, what all of this means is, this is bullshit. You know, the experiments, they are, my God, they've been doing it forever. Um, where is that video? All right, this is the video where I go through a whole lot of methods to create artificial cloud. And this foreign technology division document uh, this is a document that was translated, translated into English. The Russians did an awful lot of experiments decades, decades, decades ago on creating artificial cloud that glow. It glows. Oh, artificial glowing clouds. Oh, they just, just did it. Please. No, they've been doing it for a long time. Weather may be unnaturally severe because of unnatural modification. That was many decades ago. But Navy creation destroys clouds. Navy creation and also destruction of clouds. Ordinary carbon black is used. So, mystery ingredient, ingredient influences cloud formation. Please... And then they say that, 
oh, the clouds, they're lower and they're bigger and they're this and they're that because of climate change. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Uh, climate change is messing with the clouds. All right. We need, I need that document. It's unfortunate that I have lost all my research. All of it. So, when I've been trying to retrieve these documents, what do I come up with often? 404 error. It's gone. They are literally just deleting all the evidence. Artificial clouds in the Earth's atmosphere, that was the um, technology division, foreign technology division, document that was translated into English. And here, in this document that I do uh, at least have on video, they talk about, the Russians talk about using lithium and barium and aluminum and other uh, heavy metals that I can't read. Potassium, cesium, I can't read the others. But if you listen to this, then you can hear that they create clouds with these ingredients. And guess what? Well, the researchers, the experimenters, were just wowed with the glowing clouds. And weather force as a multiplier. Come on, please. What are we doing here? I mean, listening to the horseshit of mainstream media is just going, well, it has. It's destroyed millions and millions and millions of people and their homes, their livelihoods, their businesses due to weather. Should I go through weather as a force multiplier owning weather in 2025 where they're talking about owning the weather, the United States military, the Air Force and Navy, and this paper is to outline a strategy for the use of future weather modification to influence clouds, precipitation, storm, intensity, climate, space, fog, opportunities for space weather modification, artificial weather to produce some weather effects artificially and how the military was so excited, how nanotechnology also offers possibilities for creating simulated weather, cloud or... All right, but I just do want to show you what I have. Um, going back into that document and I was actually uh, taking excerpts from it. Can't do it anymore, but I'll just show you the excerpts that I did find. This, I think, is really important. This is from Owning the Weather by 2025. One major advantage of using simulated weather to achieve a desired effect flooding out people, destroying their property, their land. And then you have difficulty selling it. And oops, FEMA swoops in and they offer you pennies on a dollar. You know, people don't understand how all of these agendas are tied together. FEMA will buy your property. FEMA will buy your town and raise all of the structures, and they will put up the largest percentage if the town also contributes to buying that town because it's been flooded so many times. Then they raise all the property. The condition is no structures can be on that land. Wow. What a great uh, process of removal of people in certain areas to get them to move into those 
well, tightly knit little cities where they can have full control over every aspect of your life. Agenda 2030, the mega regions plan. Am I, am I talking about things that people don't know about? One major advantage of creating this weather, it makes what are otherwise the results of deliberate actions appear to be the consequences of natural weather phenomena. And it's relatively inexpensive to do. It's a spoofing technique, and if you read this document, you'll come across that. Spoofing. Ah, the military can spoof. They can create the weather, the destruction, and everybody's just kind of going, oh, it's Mother Nature, act of God. We're so screwed. We are so screwed. Well, South Carolina. You see what happened, you know, animals suffering still alive in here. It's a little cot right there. It's been all night because we can't get, get it out. Oh, oh house. It's already floating. See? It's my house over there. I had no idea that South Carolina got hit. No idea. And I did come across some videos, but I was wondering, because some people, when you have a flooding event, They'll post videos on other floods. And I came across a video that Conway, and I thought for sure this was a video somebody is posting. Uh, well, one of the hurricanes that flooded out Conway, and Conway was pretty much under water. Well, I didn't post it. But apparently, it is February 25th, massive flooding, Conway, again, again. And this, Rosewood, Socasty, Socasty, I don't know, South Carolina? Hi. This is Rosewood near the boat landing as we speak. Um, as you can see, it's as high as it was in Matthew and expected to get higher. The water has breached the neighbor's houses. This is a shot of the road going to uh, White Pine and Cottonwood. It's now encompassed Cottonwood as well. Um, I'll show you how deep it is at my house. It's come through the downstairs. And uh, water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. South Carolina. Conway, South Carolina. This is a website that you might want to subscribe to. Um, they're doing a lot of weather videos. This is South Africa, Johannesburg.
Unbelievable. Morocco. You know, somebody left <clears throat> a comment under one of my Texas videos. And he said, you can prepare all you want, but what they are doing, how do you prepare for this? How do you prepare for this? You can put up your sandbags, but they ain't going to work. This is Brazil. Weather used as a weapon. There's no preparing. There's no preparing. River is in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has been hit over and over and over again with massive flooding. Iran, Iraq, Morocco, all of these areas that, well, they're just not used to this kind of weather. Now they have it. So, you know, I don't, <clears throat> I honestly don't know how to do this anymore. Um, I am just so, you know, amazed at the level of uh, spiritual development. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but when you are trying to have conversation with people, and it doesn't matter whether they're educated or not formally. Um, it doesn't matter if they have a high school education or they have, you know, numerous um, graduate degrees. If people just don't want the truth, there's no getting through. And that's most people. That's why we're seeing so much destruction. And I just hope to God 
that these people all over the world can find some help. Black carbon dust. Okay, all the links are below. I don't know what I don't know what to say anymore, guys. <laughs>